Thank you, Mrs. King. Grace and peace in Jesus, our Savior. You know, I've noticed a kind of a shift in uh, conversation topics. Uh, you, before COVID, you know, there's, there's a couple of things you can, they're always safe to talk about. You know, you, you meet somebody with a stranger or, or there's this awkward silence and you got to talk about something. You know, there's some safe thing. The weather is always safe, right? The world's safest topic. Talk about the weather, okay? And the other thing that I've noticed over the last number of years is the other thing people talk about a lot is how busy they are, right? Everybody talk, everybody's busy. Now, there's something wrong in a culture where everybody's busy all the time, but that's a topic for another, another time. And now I'm noticing just recently another frequent topic of conversation, and it's this. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I need a break. I need a, I need a rest. I need a vacation. And none's coming. We're exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'll be honest with you. Yes. Um, and it's more than just physical. You know? It's... Um, and it's more than just COVID. Can you believe we're almost halfway through 2021? Okay. You know, and it's, but 2020 into 2021, it is COVID, and that's been so exhausting, but it's more than that. It's, it's this exhausting political tension. Oh, man. And exhausting the, the racism and the racial tensions and the, and the how do we deal with this, and that goes on and on, and that's exhausting. Um, Economic. For many, COVID was just devastating economically. And that's, that's, that's exhausting. And then we got more locally, close to home, you know, last fall. Think of the fires and the wildfires. Now, how do you feel this week, this past week? Hey, fire season has begun. Like, oh. oh. You know, it's exhausting. And, and then... Then on top of that is all the, the personal stuff that are go, that's going on in our lives. And sometimes this is even bigger, much bigger than all the other stuff put together. Whether it's a, it's a health thing that we're dealing with in our family and ourselves or, or the loss of a loved one or our own personal finances or workplace issues or lack of a workplace or any of those, you know, those things are fam, family tension. Oh boy. You know, and and we just get tired, exhausted. What do we need? We need rest, right? We need Sabbath. Well, that too is topic for another sermon. Okay, put that aside. What I want to focus on today is we need, we need strength. We need strength when I feel like, oh, I need a rest, but I, I can't. I got to keep going. Strength. I need strength. What do I mean by that? I mean, encouragement, empowerment, the ability to keep on keeping on, to keep on going. I mean, I need strength is, is, you know, whatever it takes to keep moving in the right direction, in that God-pleasing direction. Strength. Because you see, we of ourselves by ourselves in the face of overwhelming challenges, you know, we're weak. And sometimes in those situations, we really feel our weakness. That the strength I need, it isn't in here. I mean, despite cliches and people saying, yeah, you go, you got this. I, I don't got this. I don't got enough. I'm worn out. There's a song you may have heard. It's got this line in it you may have heard. They are weak, but he is strong. You ever heard that song? Oh, yeah. You've sung it a million times. Okay, we know that, right? And that is, that's what I'm talking about. When we don't have the strength within us, when my personal reserves, it just isn't there. We need strength from outside us. 
We need strength from God. We need His strength. Today we're starting a new series, a new worship series. It's called Strength in My Weakness. So I'm just thinking where we are now. We're, we're feeling the weakness. It's going to run for the next eight weeks, next couple of months. And uh, we're going to be looking at highlights from 2 Corinthians. We're not going to go through the whole book verse by verse like we often do. We're just going to hit some highlights to, so we can do this in the next two months. Um, and there's some great, great stuff in this book, in 2 Corinthians. Beautiful Word of God, beautiful promises. And why, why 2 Corinthians? Because time and again in this letter... Paul is writing about his weakness, his trouble, his unworthiness. Now, we'll be unpacking in coming weeks what the situations were that led him to be writing about this so much. But the point of it is Paul acknowledging, I'm weak, I'm unworthy, I'm broken, I'm a jar of clay. But he is strong. Christ is strong. Christ is my competency. Christ is my strength in my weakness. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Now today, the strength and weakness that, that we're focused on, especially today, as Pastor Mark has been talking about before the service and in the confession and forgiveness, is comfort in trouble. Comfort in trouble. It's the focus of the passage we just heard Matthew read. These ver- opening verses from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, finding comfort in trouble. Let's talk about that, our need for for comfort, because there's lots of trouble, right? Same list I was talking about before, but think of the grief, grief. I I was was reading, I don't know, it was an interview that I heard about, about, with a a psychologist, therapist, just about all the grief going on right now, and it's going to be continuing even when COVID restrictions go away. Grief for all the losses, not just the loss of life, but all the things we didn't do, and all the things we missed. Grief. There's a whole lot of grief, and there's anxiety, and there's worry, and there's fears, a lot of fears. Financial, relational, you know what I'm talking about. There is no lack of trouble in our world. Just turn on the news, or better yet, don't. But there's not to mention the trouble in our own lives. I mean, I've just been putting this together today, thinking back just on conversations over the past couple of weeks with a number of folks from our St. John's community and how many of them have focused on the troubles going on in their lives right now. We need comfort. Comfort. And the troubles. I look around this room. I see troubles. Don't take that the wrong way. I, I mean, things you've... You have revealed to me, Pastor Mark, the things going on. And as I look at the list of folks who've, who are with us online, yeah. Okay. We need comfort. Comfort. Now, what do I mean by comfort? What is comfort? Well, it's the assurance of, of good news in the middle of the bad. Peace in the middle of the storm. Hope in the middle of the chaos, the assurance that the trouble that I'm in won't have the last word, but there's a day coming when there will be help, there will be improvement, if not right now, then surely in the future, even if it's eternity. Comfort is what gives peace and strength and hope in the middle of the trouble that we're facing. Now, where do we get it? Where do we get it? And notice we're talking about actually finding comfort, receiving comfort in trouble, not just covering over the trouble. Okay? Because we can do that with drugs. We can do that with alcohol. We can do that by indulging in various addictions. If that's something that, is, that has touched your life, I just beg you to get help. Okay? We can, we can cover it over by, with mind-numbing entertainment, just sitting and staring at, a, staring at the screen for hours on end. And when you stop, the troubles are all still there. You know, there can be helpful things we can do, techniques, approaches to bring 
comfort to our troubled feelings. And this is good. These are good things to do, and they can be helpful in a temporary sense. You know, for instance, find somebody to talk to and talk about what's going on. Be with other people, not just by yourself. Serve. Help somebody else. That's a great way to take our our thoughts off of our own troubles. Spend some time working on a hobby, you know. And for some people, not me, spend time with your pet, okay? Make an appointment. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm allergic for those who don't know, okay? Um, make an appointment with Aaron, <laughs> okay? These are all helpful. Be helpful techniques in dealing with our, helping with our troubled feelings, distracting us, getting us through it, giving us a pick-me-up. But they don't change the ultimate trouble. Is there a deeper comfort? Is there a deeper more that we can say? Well, this is what Paul's writing about in these verses in 2 Corinthians 1. I want to take a look at how he is describing his time in Asia. Now, uh, for us, when he's talking about Asia, that's Asia the Roman province, which is Western Turkey. And he doesn't tell us specifically what happened to him, but he is talking to them about the feelings that he has and the effect that it had on him. Look at what it says. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. Look at those words. I mean, take, take them seriously. Far beyond my ability to endure. Despairing of life under us. That's not how we normally think of St. Paul, right? That, this is where he was. But as he's writing this, he's writing it from the perspective that he has received comfort. Let's back up to to verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Now, Paul had received comfort from outside of himself because he had nothing left inside. He's acknowledging that. He received comfort from the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort. And notice the words he's using to describe God. This is like what we talked about last week on Trinity Sunday, talking about our God, our triune God, who is an eternal, loving relationship within himself. This is God's essence. His nature is mercy, compassion, comfort, love. And that's where Paul received this comfort. And what is this comfort that comes from God? It's not a covering over, it's not just a technique. It's real. It is a gift from God, a gift from God that comes through his word about what, who he is, his nature, and what he has done. So I want to just review that. I want to hit on just five biblical truths that are especially helpful and bring comfort in the face of trouble. And first is this. God is for you. Whatever trouble that you are in, it is not punishment from God. God is not paying you back. God, this is not because something, we don't do karma here, okay? God is for you. As Pastor Mark was explaining in our confession and our forgiveness beautifully, Jesus Christ has died. For you and for me. Every punishment from God that you have or ever will deserve was all poured out on him. There's nothing left to be on you except the love of God. He is for you in whatever trouble. You've got the God of the universe, the God of resurrection on your side in your trouble. And here's the next one. God is with you. Now sometimes we're in the midst of the trouble we feel like God's abandoned us. We don't feel him. We don't 
experience all these good things. It feels like he's far away. It's not true. Our feelings are never a barometer of God's presence. God is with us because he promises to be. Our God is not some remote clockmaker God. He is with you. He is for you in your trouble. He is with you. The next one, he hears your prayers and answers. We can cry out to the Lord and whatever we're experiencing, he hears us. He answers, not always in the specific way that we want, but I love the way Tim Keller describes this, that God answers our prayers according to what we would have asked if we knew everything he knew about the world, about the people around us, about the future, about it all. He hears and he answers. That's comforting as well. So God is for us. God is with us. God answers or hears and answers our prayers. And then this one, God is at work in your life. Once again, when we're in the midst of the trouble, we can feel like God is absent. God is not doing anything. He's leaving me here to wallow. No, not true. He is at work in ways we cannot see. In our lives and the lives of the people around us, through it all, God promises this. Look at Romans 8, 28. So, so familiar verse, but man, it is a reason it's so familiar. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In all things, in all things, take that to heart. He is at work in the trouble, whatever it is. And then finally, the last one, he has a new creation prepared for you. That's the last word. Whatever the trouble is, and no matter how much trouble and the biggest trouble that life can throw at us, which is death, it doesn't get the last word. God has a new creation. He has a resurrection. This is why he came and died and rose again, because Satan and the fallen, broken world Satan brought about through his lies never gets the last word and never gets one inch of eternity new creation, when all that is broken, all that is painful, all that is troubled and lost will be undone. I don't understand how all that means, just that God promises it. So I hold on to that. He is the God of all comfort with you, for you, hearing your prayers at work and preparing this new creation for you. But there's more. Paul had a different focus in writing these words than just saying, I was in a bad place and God helped me. I want to go back and and look at at that again, verses 4, 3 and 4. Because what he's pointing out here is that the trouble that we're going through and the comfort God gives is not just about me. It's not just about it. It's also about the people around me. One of the reasons God comforts us in our trouble is so that then we, in turn, can be a blessing and comfort to others. And we, are, we are always interconnected, always interconnected. Let's look at that again. Go back to verses 3 and 4. We're going to keep going this time and see what Paul says next. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Now, let's keep going. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we're distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we're comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we endure. See, Paul's saying we are comforted so that, one of the reasons, so that we can be a comfort to other people. And this is so important. Because, you know, when I'm going through trouble, when I'm in a dark place, I can become extremely self-absorbed and self-focused. Poor me, having a bad time. I need comfort of God to help me out of my trouble right now. And God's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. it isn't just about you. All of the gifts from God are to be shared. We are community. We are connected with other people. It's never just about us. 
God doesn't just comfort us for our comfort. He doesn't just bless us for our blessing, but to be a fountain from which blessing flows. And, and once again, as I was putting this together, I was thinking about this, uh, an example that was right in my face in, in conversations over the past week was you know, how I have experienced greatly the Lord's comfort in the loss of my parents over the past couple of years. And I keep finding myself in conversation with people who are losing their parents or have lost them and able to bring comfort to them, including insights from how God comforted me. And I have heard this from so many of you as well, whether it's cancer, that God brought you comfort in trouble and now you can bless others. It's grief, you lost a loved one, now you can be a blessing to others. It's trouble in family, it's, it's you see, this is God's community. This is how God works. Remember last week, relationship. It's not just about us, it's about all of us. It brings a whole new dimension to trouble and comfort. My Transforming my trouble into mission. And turning my comfort that I receive into a blessing for others. And it changes me from just being a pond into which the blessings of God flow, it changes me into a river through which the blessings of God flow onto others. So how can I be a blessing? How can I bring comfort to others? How can God be at work in your life, in my life, to live out this truth? We are comforted. 